Gather on hunters, and welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command. I'm Ryan Price, first one. I'm Fleet Admiral Tirka, the heavy battle cruiser Ancient Kings. As we continue our campaign against the Romulan Star Empire, and we are pounding the final planet, the planet of 2113, and it is down to an empire defense of 45 as our advanced bombardment cruiser tries to smash down the gates. This is the last planet, as far as I'm aware, of the Romulan Star Empire, so once we take this, we've only got a handful of stations to knock out, and then the war is over. And already a vote has already been cast for the Interstellar Concordium to be the next campaign, which I have to say I'm quite partial to. I'm not sure if we fought the Romulans or the Gorn the last time, but in any event, we're not allowed to fight the Romulans as the ISC if we do pick that campaign, because we've just spent, oh, at this point, 40-something episodes fighting the Romulans? And we need a little bit of break to fight somebody who's not going to murder us in one titanic plasma volley. Which... I think that may be a little bit underappreciated in this season, <laughs> especially by me. The fact that we have been able to make use of our advanced bombardment cruiser for so long, and before that, our Merv battleship, we really haven't had to have fight the Romulans where the Romulans are strong. We get to hang back way at long range and bombard them, just with titanic, frankly unstoppable salvos. And if we have to use a race that has to get in tight with that, these battles would go in very, very different directions. <laughs> so something that I've been appreciating lately when I look at it is just, just how strong the Morak are against the Rymans, against AI Rymans. I should emphasize that. Most of these determinations are against the AI versions of our opponents. Oh, we also have a frigate. Okay, ignorable. Because, and a freighter. Perfect. Because the AI Romulans are stupid. Let's let's be 100% honest with ourselves here. The AI Romulans do not know how to play Romulans. They are bad. Because any player worth their salt, if they saw us doing this whole super large salvo thing, would immediately hit the X button. And what does that do? Well, that drops you to cloak. They would not stick around to let us bombard them with 44 missiles at a time. They would immediately break and cloak. And, well, he's actually probably going to cloak right here now that I've been speaking about it because he's a pseudo frigate tender and he probably needs to go into cloak to in order to follow his programming. I'm going to hopefully pull away to make sure that doesn't happen. But no actual human Romulan player would do this, which has me thinking. We recently got a Discord, and we've been recently also, the guys over at Hot and Spicy, have been diligently working at making multiplayer work again. So... At some point in the relatively near future, I'm going to be testing to see what it's like to finally fight the Romulans as the Merak when I'm actually fighting a Romulan player who actually knows what the heck they're doing. And I think that's going to be a fascinating experience, because I can't imagine that a Romulan... Ooh, you are... Are all those Ds? You've got two Ds, okay. So let's get this started. Look at that salvo, and she is just butchering most of them, but like most opponents, he simply can't handle the sheer number of what's coming after him. I want to see what he's going to... I am getting really antsy to see what this would be like fighting a human, because it would be fascinating, wouldn't it? Because they wouldn't be this dumb. They would use the weapons at their disposal. I mean, pirate factions, we've been doing a pirate campaign for our live streams for the past um, couple of months, actually. It's been with us for quite some time. And the amount of firepower that a pirate ship can put out is directly proportional to the intelligence of the captain. And I don't mean to use that to pat my own back. I mean to emphasize just how incredibly powerful the pirate engine doubling system is, which the AI does not make sufficient use of. So, really... The more I play this game, especially in the most recent season, because I've had a lot of time to think about it, because at the end of the day, while as fascinating as some of the battles can really become, where we're outnumbered 3 to 1 and it's mostly heavy cruisers and the like, there have also been battles like these, where I am just going through the exact rote concept of how to win the battle, which is the quick step salvo, or if we can manage it, the full salvo. And then just stacking up super salvos against planets. We have time to kind of think about this, spare brain cells and all that. And so it kind of makes me wonder, how would I fight against this? And one of the unfortunate things right now... That is the end of the mission, right? 
Am I missing something? Was this a shipyard assault? Was I just not paying attention? Oh no, it's an asteroid base assault. Whoops. I have been firing quite a bit of ammunition at nothing. Let's get ourselves up to our speed of 24 because we will be doing a titanic bombardment against our enemy. At the same time, we're also going to come over here and we're going to kick on the deep scan so that we can actually locate the enemy. The deep scan gives you a 33% increase in range once it's fully charged. That means that your sensor range goes from 100 to 133, which is pretty nice. So we're just going to set course and knock out this base. By traveling at a speed of 24, we will be able to, in essence, annihilate him in the exact same way that we annihilate a planet. And like a planet, he actually doesn't have any capability of using a shuttle bay. So he's about to get the full treatment if I have the ammunition still for it. I'm not sure that I do. And first Merv Salvo. And now we tra travel forward. Oh, you're about to have a very... Oh, no, we don't have quite enough to do the full ti Titanic Salvo. Okay, and we drop back now. And this. And how much energy do I have in that forward shield at the moment? This would be nice to know. Uh, 13.5. This should be fine. We are out of ammunition for both. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Ah, stupid of me. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Because this salvo is not going to be nearly as dangerous as it should be. Although, that's pretty nice. Oh, missiles, you are... Well, my sunshine. My only sunshine. You make me happy when nebulas are gray. Phasers to overload. I think we've got him mostly taken care of. Although, yeah, he still has all of that. That was foolish of me. I should have remembered and realized just what it is we're actually fighting. <laughs> Oh, getting cocky there and getting punished for it. He didn't actually cause any damage to the ship itself. No, None of the ship systems, none of the power systems. All of that is still perfectly intact. But still, our armor is pretty badly dented out of that one. Foolish of us. 352 prestige is our reward for a job well done. We're looking at an empire defense of 40. I think we're going to hang out in the neighborhood a little bit longer. We're doing okay. We got a little bit of damage, but we have 33,659 uh, prestige at the moment. So we're not exactly hurting in case the ship explodes. The only problem we might have would be finding another advanced bombardment cruiser, which, frankly, I think I could probably get two more if I went back to Stardock to look. In fact, we'll probably, if I remember, we'll probably check that just to see how easy it would be to get an advanced bombardment cruiser, because right now we have a lot of planets under our direct control. Now, I don't know if them not being directly connected to the homeworld anymore, because the Gorn recently, not recently, several episodes ago, chopped off our direct connection to the home. But, if not, we've got a lot of power. Okay, he's doing a speed of 10.9, that gives us a missile worm range. We are in range, let's be reasonable and honest about this, get ourselves up to speed. Hopefully catch up to these missiles a little bit, because I want to get the full Titan Salvo on. Although, on the bright side, he doesn't actually have much in the way of point defense systems so it's gonna be a little bit stretched out than i want it to be but it'll be fine shouldn't hit that just yet i don't want to stagger the salvos too much i do want to make titan salvos and we'll pull away and we'll pull away get ourselves up with the shield reinforcement we'll go with the forward shield even though our stern is facing towards the enemy it'll be a very interesting experience to not fight with missiles anymore because missiles against the ai kind of almost feel like a crutch, but I do love them. They are such an entertaining weapon to utilize. I'm gonna miss them when we stop using them, and I will be definitely looking forward to the next Marat campaign. Ah, oh, we pulled within a range of 50, so we know he has extra shields. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just so many levels of beautiful. So, uh, actually, no, we'll go that. Drop back a bit, let the missiles get in front, get the real salvo, and if he survives that, I'll be pretty surprised. Disruptors. Just to make him really cry. And pull directly away. This Dreadnought should really be quite a difficult opponent, and he's not as much as he probably should be. Put this in the hands of a real player, and you'll have a rough time. And you're dead. Oh, you had another one. How cute. Okay, you're about to be dead. Zigzag back behind it. Because he won't have it in time. There we go. Okay, you're dead. Elongated trails for maximum speed of the universe. We can probably still beat him just with energy armament alone. I mean, look at him. Yeah. Two salvos. It's a lot of missiles, let's be honest. It is 14 missiles. 6 plus 8. 
Yeah, 14 missiles. 14 missiles times 24 is, well, 24 times 4 is 48 plus 48 is 96 is 296 damage per salvo. So we're not exactly shooting light amounts of firepower towards the enemy. We are uh, very much letting them understand, oh, we have to take the surprise reversed. Well, we could take a scout mission, but no, I'm taking surprise reversed. Something to chill with, although a lot of these missions are kind of chill. Just because the advanced bomb bomber cruiser is so lovely. It's such a wonderful ship. Oh, whoever designed this thing needs a medal. Even if you consider fighting an actual human opponent in a vessel like this, the amount of firepower is just staggering. And I would be hard-pressed to think of a ship that I would actually want to use to try and fight this thing. You'd have to just absolutely max out on point defense. I think, yeah, a few, I think a month, two months ago? Back when we were still doing combined episodes of Rogue Tech and Starfleet Command instead of separ separating them out into their own uh, stream episodes, when we were doing special missions on the side, we were able to shoot down every single Merv from one of these vessels from an advanced bombardment cruiser, using a Federation battleship where every single weapon was set to point defense. And even then, I think some got through and did damage. I'll have to check. This was a while ago, back when we were still doing skirmish missions. Which I kind of want to get back to doing. So, because doing the skirmish missions was just a nice little change of pace from the uh, pirate campaign. Because the pirate campaign really gives you an appreciation for just how powerful some of these ships really, truly are. Uh, that'll go to you. That'll go to you. And at the same time... Actually, I do need to drop back if I really want to make this effective. Disruptors, may as well engage. Just get them away. And increase the speed of time to maximum, please. Let's just get this going. At full power. And then I will give you another Merv Volley, and I will give you another Merv Volley, and then I'll come in towards you. Because now they've got six missiles heading towards each other. Yup. Yeah. And this ought to do a lot of damage to you, and come around to you. Oh, they're not dead. Truly? Well and truly. Well, he's dead. And you. And you. And I shouldn't have done that because I... Missed a couple of missiles there. And for the final battle. Just blasting disruptor fire all across space. That was very cinematic. I loved it. Oh no, we still have Oh, you're an you're a fast X cruiser. Oh, that's awesome. Hi, I'm a big fan of X ships. Please accept my sincerest gifts, I suppose. As we provide you with every bit of firepower that we could possibly manage. Ah, uh, just, you're gone. You're done. He survived three Merv volleys of full... Uh, two more? Three, I think, he, I think he did hit three. So that's a lot of firepower they managed to take on. Now granted, Mervs don't deal as much direct immediate damage as other missile types, but it is a significant amount of firepower. And the tile is ours, which was half the intention. Planetary Assault, thank you very much. Although we do have to be careful on this mission because our magazines are at half levels. So we won't be able to just willy-nilly fire everything everywhere. We must actually be clever, but we do have the BCJ USS Patton, the New Jersey-class battlecruiser, with the additional pair of photon torpedoes. It's basically what the... Oh, we are already, already at the correct speed. It is what the Federation Excelsior class would be if you finally took the photon torpedo launchers and aimed them forward instead of facing backwards, which is a dumb plan, and I don't know why the Excelsior is designed that way. Yes, we have run into a couple of situations where that sort of loadout with a f aft firing photon torpedo is a good idea, but for the most part, well, it's not. Let's start opening fire immediately with our heavy volleys. We'll have to get ourselves up to speed now that we have the energy for free and get a decent amount of forward shield reinforcement. We are only going to fire one salvo into the rock because I can't really afford to fire anything else. The Rock is, of course, a very awesome, powerful ship. It was one of the more popular ships that we flew in during our Romulan campaign for our anti-Federation strike. They're deadly. They're incredibly dangerous and, I think, quite cool. But fighting against them, we have a couple of severe advantages. 
All right, get ready to pull back a bit. How close is that planet? We should be fine. The rock is also carting just an absolute metric ton of pseudo frigates, so I don't want to get anywhere near there just in case dropping the pseudo frigates will prompt him to cloak because he's getting one volley. That's all I can provide to him. And I need this to work because otherwise the New Jersey class, the pattern, yeah, he's going to die because the amount of firepower the rock brings to the table is significant. He's got two Plasma torpedoes, I believe it might be one, but I thought it was... No, he's he's only got the one. Send the probe just to make sure, but I'm fairly certain it's just the one. And we're going to set tracks immediately away. Are you going to stop? There goes this crash stop. So it is just the one. He did take a couple of hits on that one before we actually blew it out, so that'll work out quite nicely to our advantage. But really, it's this that's going to, well, make him cry. Because by this point, he's just about to take all kinds of damage. Didn't cloak in time. Oh, 198 damage. Now, here's the downside. At this point, he will very shortly be deploying his pseudo frigates, and his pseudo frigates are deadly. Oh, but he's still just taking damage from the long-range photon torpedoes. Disruptors, are you not in range? Apparently not. There must be a disruptor force. Oh yeah, photon torpedoes at the range of 55, not the disruptors. So he launched from pretty much maximum range, which is a pretty fascinating determination. Phasers to overload as we come on in here. I don't want to have to use any of my other uh, long-range missiles at this point. I want to purely wipe him out on energy armament alone. And that's not vanity. That's a decision that we need to destroy this planet. It is a PLPH-18, I believe. And so it will have pretty significant phaser defenses. Hopefully you've deployed all of your defenses against other people. And I want to cut across your bow. We want to cut across the axis and try and draw their fire. Phasers. Okay, decent amount of damage. Only 40 damage, actually. That's not nearly as much as I was hoping for. Phasers as we come by. I have at firing Gatlings, so let's get them involved. Because Gatlings do just a metric ton of damage to everything. Look at that. The ship has been gutted. Every single photon torpedo is gone. And the phasers. The phasers. I don't have to do this. I want to do this. Come on, keep firing the phasers, please. Oh, I do need to slow down to make sure I actually have energy for things. It, the ship is pretty much done for. I saw all of his plasma torpedoes. Yeah, they're gone. Okay, we can we can focus on him if you want. But there's really no reason for this. I'm just doing this to make you feel better, Patton. And you know your misses. It is the Gavia. Oh, I guess he survived. Uh, the Patton is has another one. I did not think he had another uh, wild weasel. Let's see if we can't get the Gatlings involved. Oh, there we go. Is that a mine that you deployed? Well, he dropped his forward shield for something. I'm assuming probably for marine-related obstacles because there was no mine placed there. And there goes the main hull of the rock. Goodbye, rock. You're one of my favorite Romulan cruisers. Yes, I know that the, Romulan, that the King Condor is the most powerful battleship out there, but the rock is cool. First of all, it's called the rock. How can you not be awesome if you're named after such a powerful mystical bird? Which most Romulan ships are. Although Firehawk and Superhawk and Neohawk or... Was it Neohawk? No, it was Novahawk. Novahawk was the name of that one. Such an awesome name. And we'll get within our range of 72 and immediately conduct a long-range missile bombardments. Your planet has no defense against what we were about to bring to it. I think I've said that several times about not having defense against the dense Jim Henson is dispensing. So right along the Terminator, we're just going to go right in for it, bombard him with everything we've got. We'll get the maximum salvo if I can manage it. I'm not sure I can. Uh, oh, I might. Yes, we are going to give him the full treatment. So he is going to get haul 116, is it? Uh, 36 times 3 is... Yeah, it'll be 116. And that'll just be a ridiculous amount of firepower that he can't stop. Now, to be 100% fair, this is 8 plus 18. So, yeah, 26 missiles. Which is not nearly as much as 116, but in actual terms of how much damage we're dealing, it's only going to be 18 missiles worth, which still... A hilarious amount of firepower. I mean, that is 240 minus 48 is the amount of damage that we're dealing to this planet. Which, yeah, not an insignificant amount at all. Drop down on speed. 
I'll have to get that forward shield, even more reinforcement, so we don't smash into the planet. Now, there was the whole refinement of hitting the crash stop. I don't really feel the need for it, although maybe I should, as we'll drift on down to a stop as the forward shield is quite nicely set up. Also, uh, I don't need it just yet. Luckily, he has shot himself with his plasma torpedoes, so we don't have to worry about most of that. Yeah, that is a bit of a problem, if the planet hurts itself with its own plasma torpedoes. And also, they start so far away, but I suppose it makes sense. Shooting down some of the missiles, tractoring a whole bunch more, and then just... that. <laughs> oh, you are just not having a good day, are you? Uh, this is the last of our Mervs, followed up by the... not the last... I hope not the last of our primary missile armament. But the New Jersey finally getting within range, adding his firepower to the mix. 16 damage, which means all four photon torpedoes hit. Or, although he did fire six, didn't he? So, two of them missed, but hey, that two-thirds accuracy from a planet that's currently putting out an attack shift of one, that is not insignificant at all. Disruptors to continue the engagement cause a little bit more damage down to him. And... broken? Marines. How many Marines are you gonna have to kill? Uh, we are looking at two. Okay, excellent. So let's just get within range and we'll have a nice little good time of it all. And just for giggles, more missiles, all the missiles, because, oh god, it's so good to just put up massive salvos. Every other race plays at it, but the Marak, they live it. I love, the, it, it's one of the best things, for the Marak at least, about the Orion Pirates Plus mod. The increased ship list brings on all the Merv ships, even the like mid and early era Merv ships. And it just get, makes the Marak so much more viable, and they already were pretty viable in the mid-game, it just makes them better. Oh, I love it. Can you imagine, though, an advanced bombardment cruiser with nothing but Mervs? Eight more Merv launchers. Fourteen Mervs? Fourteen times six would be uh, 84 missiles per salvo. Can you imagine such an amazing thing? So we'll let our marines finish conquering the planet, and that'll be another mark against them. It should be 450 or 395 for the amount of uh, prestige that we'll make. You make 670 if you manage to capture the homeworlds, but we've already captured both of the homeworlds, so that we don't have to worry so much about that. And they will finish conquering all the peoples. And most of the planet is... Okay, none of the planet is intact, but most of the shields of the planet are intact. I'm not quite sure how they managed that one, but they've managed to do it. So we'll wait just out here at a decent-ish orbit with our powerful shields towards the enemy, as we'll wait for our marines to finish securing all the important lava fields. Clearly, that's what we're coming here for. We're looking for a sauna, and only the lava fields will provide it. There we go, target captured. And the planet is ours. The planet of System 21X13Y, which, you know, that's where we are. Although it would be interesting if you could name all the planets individually. I wonder if that's actually possible. Hmm. Something to look into. 495 prestige is our reward. We are at 34,768 prestige. We are not hurting for prestige. They happen to think that we are the grandest Grand Admiral that ever Grand Admiral. And the Empire Defense of this planet is down to 30, which means about six more missions and it falls. And then this is an Empire Defense of 10. The Romulan Star Empire is not looking good. I know it's a little bit hard to see because the teal and the green kind of blend in with each other, but we are just crushing them. Now, there is this sector up here, which we are going to have to come up here to take care of, but the Romulans not having a good time. And apparently, wow, that's got to be the Federation Expeditionary Force just leaping deep inside Klingon territory. Remember them? Go way, way back? Maybe Okay, don't go way, way back. The, the audio quality was terrible, but still. Alright, that's going to do it for today's episode, making some serious progress against this planet. We should have it in the relatively near future. I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I release one of these videos, press the little bell icon. Leave a comment. What faction do you want to see us play next time? It is Gorn, ISC, or Hydrons are currently on the table. And also the other rule is we're not allowed to fight Romulans for the next campaign either. So with that in mind, pick a faction that you think we should play. And I will see you all in the next episode.